Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video we're gonna do the unboxing, build, test and the review of the ANAT E10. So stay tuned. First part of the video is the unboxing, so let's open the box and see what we have inside. My first thought when I saw this printer was, hmm, this looks very much like CR10, only smaller. It's even the pack in a similar way. And since I have the CR10, I'm very interested to see how this printer will compare to the CR10, since it has much lower price. And when you take out everything from the box, this is what you're gonna find inside. This printer is around 80% pre-assembled. On the right side you're gonna see the control box, which contains the power supply, motherboard, LC panel and the cables. All the cables are pre-attached, but you do need to install the heater and the X-carriage cover holding with two screws. Next you're gonna get the 3D printing surface, microSD card with USB reader, USB cable, zip types, teflon tube, power cord cable, removable tool and 20 meters of free filament. And now it's time for assembly, but before that, let's take a look on the microSD card which contains the instruction manual. This one right here. In the microSD card, you're going to find video assembly guide, installation guide, troubleshooting, slicing software Cura and repeater host, how to set them, configuration files, there is some STL 3D models, 3D parts for printer itself, test G codes, assembly parts list, and there is a print quality troubleshooting guide which explains how to understand 3D printing and get better quality from your printer. Alright, let's build it. This 3D printer has some 3D printed parts and not metal or molded parts which I usually expect to find. Those parts are filament holder, brackets for rods on I-axis, brackets for threader rods on Z-axis and end caps are 3D printed. But the good thing is that for all these 3D printed parts there is STL files on microSD card so you can print them yourself again if ever needed or you can also choose different color if you like. First part of assembly was without problem, but I noticed right away some issue with this build. The Z-stepper motors are mounted in such a way that heated bed collide with the stepper connectors and even in the manual is the same. Strange, so I just unscrew these two screws and rotate stepper by 90 degrees and that solved this issue. This is how the Z-steppers should be installed in the first place. So when you move the heat bed, nothing will collide to each other. So Anat, please change this in a manual, thank you. One comment of movement of I-axis or heated bed is that for moving of heated bed on E10, Anat are using the smooth rods with linear bearings and on the CR10 Creality are using the bearings, wheels and V-slots extrusions which are much smoother and quieter. Next, I noticed that all these aluminum rail extrusions on E10 are T-slots and not V-slots like on the CR10, but they are using the right wheel for them. We will see how will that affect on a long-term usage, but since these wheels are very cheap, I wouldn't worry about that. On E10, calibration wheels on T-slots have plastic stands off compared to metal one on the CR10. And for adjusting of pressure on T-slots, you have to press the wheel in the same time and screw it down, which I found a little bit tricky. Nuts which holding these calibration wheels are too small and they are not holding carriages so well. This issue I easily solved by installing one small washer on all three adjusting wheels. So Anat, please add the three small washer in the manual, thank you. 
On other hand, other than that, I didn't have any more issues with assembling this printer. For assembling this printer it took me around 1 hour and in fact assembly was much easier compared to ANAT A6 or A8. And the last piece of the puzzle is this 3D printing surface. And it's done. And this is how the printer looks when it's fully assembled. And now let's run some specs. ANAT E10 has a metal frame made from linear aluminum rails with two slots. Build volume is 220 by 270 by 300 mm. It has the dual fan, one for cooling down the hot end and one for cooling the filament. It has the Bowden setup with metal extruder. There is a belt tighter on heated bed, which is a nice option since the belts are rubber plastic type like on ANAT A8. X and Z carriage are on roller wheels and the I axis are using the linear bearings. It uses dual Z axis lead screw which should be more stable than the printers which has only one. But we're gonna test that. The control box has big graphic LCD, nice knob for navigate through the software and reset button. On the left side of control box is a switch for voltage, there is a place for micro SD card for offline printing and a USB port. This is the back of the printer and how that I solved adjusting issue later on with adding only one small washer under the nut for all three adjusting roller wheels. Now it's much better and more precise. And I add a small piece of teflon tube to make the smooth pass for the filament. This is how that I secure the cables with cable ties to make secure connection and to relieve stress if I move printer around. This is a belt adjuster for heated bed and 3D printed base for eye access. Heated bed is mounted very similar like on ANAT A8. And now it's time for test prints. Like always, my first test print is 20mm hollow cube with 0.8mm walls for 0.4mm nozzle. Before this print, I recheck every screw, I tighten up the belts and I level the heat bed. And the printing now is complete. Not bad for the first test print. The cube are looking good, so we can continue. Next print is this phase. I scaled down this face to 50% scale just to quick test the precision of Z axis. I like to print vase in a spiral mode in Acura, which print entire model only in one pass and it's very fast. Any imperfection in Z axis will show here and it will be very visible. So far so good, the vase looking nice. And now let's print the six angle ways. Nice. Again, very nice results. On every side, this ways looks very good. There is no gaps between the layers. Angles are straight and otherwise this orange PLA looks very cool. 
And now let's print the 3D bench. And I print it. And I print it again. And again. And again. And again. I have the whole fleet. The reason why that I print 3D Benji 5 times is to show you most how retraction speed from 10 till 50 mm is affected on the print quality. During these test prints I realized also one more thing. Duck air nozzle is very small and I found that using 90% or even 80% fan speed actually blowing more air through the nozzle than on 100% fan speed. And that's because the fan blows more air than the air nozzle can handle it which actually creates a back pressure inside the fan and blocks air making prints look worse. This issue can be solved by installing the new duck nozzle or using the lower fan speed. Little bit of cleaning and this 3D Benji looks very impressive. I'm sure if I use here even more retraction speed that I can get even better results. But still it is pretty impressive print. I would say almost perfect. And now it's time to print something big and something large. So I scale up this vase to the maximum, I slice it with the latest version of the Cura and I start to print. Printing took almost 8 hours to complete, but after that, I was very happy with the results. These vase look amazing, the quality of these layers are great. Really awesome results. There is no separation between the layers, they are looking perfect. Our next print is gonna be the low poly fox. And again, these low poly fox are looking great. And I know what you're thinking, how did I print this so nice? Well, let me tell you that this almost perfect print are not without the consequences. This what happened. Yeah, that goes my build tech away. Damn it. Yep, nothing like good old blue tape. And for the final print, I decided to do the speed test and to print my favorite mobile phone stand. I increased the speed to 100 mm a second and we will see how this printer will handle it. And it's over. After 37 minutes of printing, printer is done. And I already see that it's looking great. Very successful print. Nice. Very, very nice. I switched the camera to close out of focus mode to show you guys these layers. Look at these layers, they are perfect. And the surface is smooth. Awesome. Very happy with these results. Come on, focus. Right there. Great. And the last test is heat up time. The maximum temperature that I could achieve was 92 degrees on the printer without any heat bed insulation material. And now the final thoughts. Well guys, I think the E10 is not bad at all. Other than a few minor issues that I easily solve, I didn't have any other problems with this printer. I think the E10 has a pretty good potential and with a few upgrades can be pretty decent 3D printer. Print quality on the other hand is a very good and I was able to get some quality prints. 
Now the E10 should not be compared with the CR10 even if it looks very similar. CR10 is a better and much bigger 3D printer but is also much more expensive. So if you're looking for the low cost 3D printer with a big build volume and you don't want to spend extra money on the CR10 then E10 can be your choice. Alright guys that was my review of the Enat E10. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe and if some of you guys want to check out this printer have a look in the links in the video description. Till next time take care and good luck with your printing. Bye bye.